Beth, I'd love to pass the baton on to you for our next discussion. Absolutely. Thanks, ladies. So, Jamie, we have heard Margaret and Alla start their discussion with screening practices related to mitigating risk. Um, another way that energy, the energy industry is transforming is through a focus on renewable, clean energy. And Halliburton is really acting as the thought leader here. A demonstration of that would be Halliburton Labs. So can you tell us a little bit about Halliburton Labs, especially as it relates to the renewable clean energy? Yes, so um, like Ala mentioned earlier, um, the future energy supply is definitely ever changing and we're gonna continue to see that, uh, especially in the decades to come. Um, the energy system of the future will require many different technolog technological advances to accelerate uh, the development of clean energy solutions. You know, in order to achieve this scale of um, acceleration, you know, early stage companies require capital, technical and operational expertise, um, mentorship, access to lab space, and then definitely the opportunity to improve their technology. And with that um, being said, you know, Halliburton has come up with a new organization, Halliburton Labs, that is going to host those early stage companies and their uh, members of the academy to be able to come into our facility and partner with Halliburton to further accelerate uh, the, the mission, you know, to advance cleaner and affordable energy. Awesome, that's great, thanks. We appreciate that insight. Going back to the topic of managing risk, and also in relation to ongoing monitoring, Halliburton took a very conservative approach to rescreening employees that were rehired after they were released due to the pandemic. In fact, a full background check was run if an employee was away for 30 or more days. Can you tell us about why Halliburton took this approach and used, um, and as well as some of the results that you received? Absolutely. So um, very similar to what Margaret had said, you know, people change um, throughout the duration. You know, their tenure with a company could be very short or very extensive. And through that time, you know, many things could happen. Um, some that could be a negative impact to them and they may have not alerted the company. Although it is stated in our company policies to, you know, make that voluntary communication to your local HR. We have um, seen just recently as we're going through this, the, re the revamping and bringing individuals back, um, you know, running these background checks again, things have come to light for rehire employees that, you know, they did not note to their local HR and management, and it has disqualified them from becoming reemployed with the company. So we think that it's very important that we continue to follow this practice um, not only for, you know, Halliburton security, but for our customers as well. There's very strict requirements that we got to make sure that we're compliant with and the safety of the company and, and all employees. So, yes, we do conduct those um, background checks for anybody that is gone longer than 30 days. Great. I think that's really interesting and it's great information to share because as a client success partner, that is one of the questions that I get frequently is how often should we rescreen if we should rescreen at all. So I appreciate you sharing that. I also feel that this helps reinforce the results of a study that Sherm conducted. They found that during three months of monitoring, a company with more than 30,000 employees and contractors uncovered 11 felony arrests five drug-related arrests, and a reoccurring sex offender. So again, that rescreening ties back to protect your brand. So Jamie, lastly, we have been partnering to support your vision to streamline your program and reduce the workload for you and your team. Can you talk a bit about the changes we are making to your adjudication matrix and how this will help? Absolutely. So, um, you know, in the years prior, we've uh, been working on just a two-tier uh, disposition matrix with Sterling. And with that two-tier disposition matrix, it definitely put a lot of the onus back on Halliburton um, to go back and review each and every single one of those background checks. 
as we continue to move forward and we're looking to streamline our hiring process and the time to hire, we're wanting to um, implement, you know, the three-tier staging where we've got uh, less onus back on Halliburton, but more so of the matrix-driven um, dispositioning put into the systems and to, you know, Sterling to help aid us in some of that, that burden that we were seeing. So we are starting to implement um, a three tier, which will help alleviate the, the review time that is being taken place by Halliburton. Um, this will also help us put more focus on those individuals that actually need Halliburton's focus on them and enable us to continue to vamp our matrix and you know improve it as we move forward. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for sharing this great information. Allah, I will send it back your way. Thank you, Beth. And uh, yeah, Jamie, I, I thought it was such an interesting test case, like a real test case of, um, you know, unfortunately the cuts that you needed to have made and bringing folks back and then discovering uh, information criminal of criminal activity during the time of their employment. So really appreciate you sharing that.